We had renders earlier this week, but again, I snuck into Dwight's office and uh, you know, I freed the early pre-production samples of our Hawkeye and Kate Bishop here in their iconic back-to-back -back, uh, arrow shooting poses with their quivers here. So we've got Kate and, Kate and Clint there. And then I also happened to get a hold of this guy. So for the first time oh, last goodness. year, we have Infinity on. And Dwight was not kidding when he said this lance is humongous. This thing is like eight inches long. Yeah, it's like bigger than the figure. Cool. It's snowing outside. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and I, oh man, thinking back, it's been kind of a bad action figure week. Well, a bad action figure week is still an action figure week, and that's never too bad, but you know what I mean. Both reviews I put up this week had QC issues that were bummers. I, I got halfway through the reviews and realized, <sighs> well, okay, the Amazing Yamaguchi Deadpool version 2 X-Force Edition wasn't too terrible when it comes to the figure. There's the frustration of Revel Tech joints, but then the pop-on parts were too tight and the paint job was terrible in places. Then I got to the SH Figure Arts Mandalorian Season 2 Mando and... <sighs> so I am absolutely ready to talk about some pretty promotional pictures this week. Where it's only hopes and dreams and future aspirations of figures being perfect right out of the box and paint jobs being nice and crisp and accessories that fit in hands, swappable parts that just... You know what I'm talking about, just that... Get some good feels going on. Figures that articulate nicely and easily right out of the... Ooh. Shit. Big Bad Toy Store got their own Amazing Yamaguchi exclusive with the New 52 Superman in black suit. And yep, I searched the web for it. The New 52 Superman in black suit does indeed have a red cape, and my brain just rejects it. It should be white. I'd even go for silver. But red... Get thee away from me! But also going by Google, this costume should have like neon streaks running through it and then S shields on the shoulder. Well, not the detail inside, just the outer shape. And that doesn't have it. What this is, is essentially the amazing Yamaguchi Superman they've already solicited in black. Which at this point, when we hear store exclusive, should be the first thing we think of. It's the figure that already exists with a different paint job on top. And despite all my whining or my, oh no, that looks so wrong. It does look nice, but if you're not into Amazing Yamaguchi, you're looking at this going, <sighs> if you love Amazing Yamaguchi, you're, mm. that's the only two feelings when it comes to Revel Tech. You adore it or you despise it. If you are interested in this though, Big Bad Toy Store, $110, should drop in June. Todd served up another heaping helping of DC Multiverse this week, starting with the official solicitations for the CW Season 7 Flash, I think last week I said WB. It's, it's CW. And then Rebirth Godspeed. Not much new here that we didn't glean from the original reveals other than both come with some fairly nice lightning effects, but there are some interesting McFarlane Toys engineering tidbits to dig into. Now, it may not be a new thing, but I'm just now seeing it where they have kind of moved away from using the smooth balls at the wrists and ankles. They aren't breaking up the flow of the sculpt anymore. They reshaped them to integrate better into the silhouette while retaining the same movement. The trading cards included continue to give us a glimpse at the original prototypes, which may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for me, it's fascinating, the process. Like for Godspeed, the original white was more matte and then the gold was more vibrant, but that's pretty common when it, going from prototype to factory piece. There's more plastic involved, so it's gonna be a little shinier, a little duller little different. And it took me a minute to actually realize the card images flipped too. I was trying to figure out why, why'd you change the skull so much and then reverse the lightning bolt? But the hands are also on the wrong side. For Barry, there's a whole lot more going on. The red is a deeper color. Yeah, again, the colors change from early to later, but they also changed up the mid torso articulation cut. The original didn't have those bulldog jowls. <laughs> I would say they made the change to fit with the seam lines on the costume better where it comes down and then kicks, but I, f I can't help feeling the card has a better transition from pecs to abs. I mean, that Charlie Brown cut has never been my favorite going all the way back to the original Batman. Is that who had it? So to see it pop up again. But after that, we got new pictures of new figures, starting with Hush. The original reveal was, ooh, dark and gritty with him holding his trademark duel. Bowie knives? 
Then the actual solicitation popped up on walmart.com, gave us a look at the final figure, and the trench coat is more of a slightly overripe banana color, which then backtracks to a dark leather brown on the trading card, again giving us a glimpse at what could have been. Still, Hush adds to the villain ranks. Ain't nothing wrong with that. After that, Future State Jonathan Kent popped up on Walmart, but these aren't exclusive to Walmart.com. That's just Walmart doing Walmart things. Oh, we got this information? Throw it up. I don't know this character or this look, but I'm a sucker for her good heat vision eyes. I see a lot of people saying, oh no, it's drastic side eye or cross eye, but I don't see that here. I just see the, the light shining out. It's not as cool as the trading card. Again, I wish we had that flaming hot eyeball that we see there, but still, it, it's not a bad look. There is Grifter. I think he's been floating around on leak lists for a while. It's good to see him in plastic form, but again, this gun ban is just downright stupid. The movies, the comic books, the cartoons, those are still full of all kinds of shooty shooty bang bangs. These are still representations of characters who uses guns and rocket launchers and plasma blasters and acid shooters and all kinds of things that can kill or maim people. If you're gonna go that far, why not the knives and the swords? Grifter don't carry swords, he carries guns that barely look like guns. At the very least, there's still trigger finger hands so we can put our own guns in there, but we shouldn't have to, right? Finally, as far as I know, just this morning, the death metal anti-crisis Wonder Woman also popped up on walmart.com. It's Wonder Woman in gold. With that chainsaw weapon that's always pretty sweet. Seeing this, it reminds me of that panel that you see floating around the internet all the time where Batman painted himself and Robin and the whole room yellow in order to intimidate Green Lantern. Like, ah, you can't touch me. Now Wonder Woman's all, ha ha, you can't touch me. Notice it doesn't say gold label though, which given past releases, you would think this would be a perfect candidate for that exclusive offshoot of the line. But this is actually comic accurate. Crazy DC, just, Gold. Various pre-orders, links are in the description. Oh, you wanted more DC? Well, Uncle Robo's got you covered. Because Mezco also solicited their 112th collective DC The Batman. Perfect timing too. Open up those pre-orders while the interstate truck explosions are still hot. Yes, I saw the movie. I loved it. Y'all wanted to see movie reviews from me. That's it. I loved it. And, cut. and I came out of the movie absolutely needing a plastic representation of this Batman and Mezco delivered. For the most part, I feel that it is a little thick from what we saw on the screen. Neck is a little shorter, shoulders are a little broader, more meat on those bones. Don't get me wrong, I love all the details and all the accessories and the various heads. I've seen the comments saying that the likeness is off, but that's just Mezco. That's standard when it comes to action figures based on live action. Mezco doesn't Mezco without some Mezcofication. And I just killed the word Mezco, didn't I? Damn it. Which I guess you could chalk the bulk up too. It's just Mezco being Mezco. So <laughs> thinking about it, I I'm, don't have as much problem with the proportions as I did one minute ago. In fact, this is the perfect 112th Collective. Robert Pattinson, Batman. I'll, I'll go on record saying that. Personal body bag and all. <laughs> no, I know it's accurate to the movie and it makes sense as a wingsuit, but my mental image is, hey, let's throw a trash bag over our head and jump off the roof of the house. Not that I've ever done that or tried to talk somebody else into doing that. $125 scheduled for early 2023. Are you batman out yet? I didn't think so. Well, okay, not so much Batman. Are you vengeance out yet? Because here is the... Hmm, uh, the SSR Studio SSC-002 Night of Vengeance. Definitely not Flashpoint Thomas Wayne Batman. No, it's not. Quit looking at him like that. I always liked the splash of color that this costume brought to the old gray and black with the red on the holster rig and then behind the logo. And I thought the Mezco Batman was a chonk. This is Thick. Look at this thing. The body makes the head look so small. And not just the unmasked head, it's the cowed head too. Just... I am vengeance. No help me get in the car. But you know what a third party unlicensed definitely not Batman means? No gun ban. Which I can see lawyers just trying to zero in as I'm speaking. Where's this company? $87 says June, but we'll see. Everything and even the big companies are getting pushed back a little bit. And if you follow the 5K Toys link in the description and see the $14 up at the top, 
it doesn't cost $14. It is not a nice looking 112th scale Batman with cloth goods and accessories and swappable parts for $14. Come on now, use your noodle. Hell yeah, look who got solicited this week. Boomerang Space Cop. <laughs> Actually, it's the Super 7 Thundercats Ultimates. Mandora. I think last week I said something like, I prefer my head cannon, what I came up with, and come to find out after talking to Veebs, I wasn't too far off. She's a space cop with a boomerang in space. Fear my uncanny ability to pick up on obvious visual cues in action figures. Comes with three heads, two of which are the same head with just the hair pointing in a different direction. I guess peggable ponytail wasn't feasible or something? I don't know. Then there's hands, her space boomerang, a flaming space boomerang, a set of handcuffs with too much chain, I guess for bigger prisoners, a space cop badge, a prototype bop it, and an early 80s Texas Instruments calculator. Mandora is not part of a standard Thundercats series. Super 7 is calling this wave 5.5 and then offering her up with her electro charger. Now, if I hadn't caught onto the space cop thing before, this obviously makes her a galaxy chips officer. That's celestial highway patrol, <laughs> yeah. but has some hidden features like retractable wheels for either land or air, the soap sprayer, canister, and effect that stores away in a center console, and then the radio. Seven Mandora 3, we've got a planet wide 1091L. Please send back up. 104, good buddy. Roger, over, out. Boomerang Space Cop is the standard $55. Her sweet ride is $155. And then there's a bundle. Or you can order them separate if you only want one or the other, but then there's a bundle for a $205. We had already seen the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon Usagi Yojimbo and Neutrinos. This week they went up for pre-order. There's about a two week window right now on the NECA store where you can go ahead and go over and grab these. Where you can go ahead and go over and grab these. That's a terrible sentence. Just uh, uh, go grab them. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think all the accessories have been shown or maybe they have. I don't know. I don't follow this line as close as I do other lines. Usagi comes with this and that and some of those and a copy from Jurassic Park. And then the neutrinos come with a little of this and a little of that, a few hoverboards, a baby elf and a baby alf. As always, if you're interested, link is in the description. NECA also teased a few upcoming female action figures for International Women's Day. The first is obviously Greta from Gremlins in a wedding dress. The second, I'm pretty sure, is the TMNT Universal Monsters crossover April O'Neil as the Bride of Frankenstein. Don't know how many times I tried to say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universal Monsters crossover April O'Neil as the Bride of Frankenstein. Of course, now I do it. The general consensus on the third one seems to be Eliza from Gargoyles. The hair sweeps out because NECA is contractually obligated to take up as much shelf real estate as possible with this line. The fourth? I have no idea. I've seen some suggestions of Carrie and the, the, the main baddie from The Conjuring. Lily Munster. The silhouette freaks me out. I can't make these into cuffs on a dress. I think body parts or some kind of accessories or T-Rex heads. Oh, Bride of Odious. Those are T-Rex heads. Brrr. Marvel Legends also got a little spotlight this week with pre-orders opening for their What If Infinity Ultron Wave Hawkeyes. Kate Bishop and Clint Barton were both renders when they were revealed back in December for the actual full-on solicitation. There's still renders. There have been some tweaks though. Kate, not so much. Just seems some of her face details were made sharper, like her moles were slightly more prominent. For Clint though, the Marvel team added a couple of cuts, one with the butterfly strips up on his forehead, which fits this look for Hawkeye perfectly. Then yesterday, Ryan did an Instagram live showing off some upcoming Marvel Legends three and three quarter inch figures, but there was also some six inch hints, or well, better looks at well, I guess what was just solicited. He had some factory samples of the two Hawkeyes. And when I first saw the video, I thought, well, why they have their bows in the wrong hands? Then I realized the video is flipped. If you want to trick me in some way, just flip your photo, flip your video. And I'm confused all to hell. He also showed off the build a figure Infinity Ultron with his mighty pokey stick while explaining that they couldn't show the rest of this wave because the characters the action figures are based on haven't even shown up in the MCU yet. Makes me wonder why they solicited the Hawkeyes this early in the first place. I, I mean, I understand getting product out there, maybe building hype for the upcoming wave. Because most of the online shops did post pre-orders for the actual full wave, they just have the rest of the characters blanked out. And I'm sure there's a leak list or rumors out there, but you know me. I, I, I have no clue. I live in ignorant bliss. 
of upcoming figures that haven't been shown in plastic form. I'm guessing at least one's gonna be Moon Knight related because that show's coming up, it's building its own hype train, and Ryan did tease another upcoming figure with some kind of accessory that could be said to be Moon Knights or Daredevils. I can just hear Dwight right now. A stick. Wow. We really spared no expense. A stick. I guess we'll find out sometime in the future. To cap things off, we are gonna swing back around to this badass looking figure, pre-orders and all. This is the Maestro Union Fure Planet Series Wave 1 Wilderness Hunter Crocker. Yes, this is the same company that solicited the Fury Toys Samurai Turtle Wave 1 Assassin Spring earlier in the year. This time around, they're being way smarter with their marketing. Well, and I guess the direction of the line itself. Instead of tiptoeing the line with an action figure that heavily resembles a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, that comes with alternate parts to make it a dead-on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, they're taking this and building a world of super intelligent animals that stray further away from licensed product. The press release says, Fure Planet is an imaginary planet full of anthropomorphic animals set in a modern society that features different countries and cities, with every character having their own jobs and roles to play. First in the series is Wilderness Hunter Crocker, who features 28 movable joints and two different looks, Prison Breaker and Hunter. So if you decide to use Prison Breaker look as Killer Croc in your display, that's on you. The aesthetic still matches up with the Samurai Turtle Assassin, so if you put on the Hunter gear, and call it Leatherhead, that's your business. All they're doing is giving you a kick-ass looking humanoid crocodile with some accessories. Does make me wonder about the Samurai Turtles summer, fall, and winter though. Does Crocker jumping ahead in line mean they ran into some kind of legal issues with Spring? I feel like I'm speaking in code here. I'm losing track of what the hell I'm talking about. Anyway, $90 set for July. And that's it for this week. Probably not. It's been a hectic week. I haven't been able to keep track of the news like I usually do, but uh, again, We'll swing around next week if I did, unless I fall off a skyscraper or something, even though there's no skyscrapers anywhere near me. You never know. If you're interested in seeing any of these pictures up close without me all, they flipped the picture. What are you talking about? They, they completely different. I'll be posting all of that, plus links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. I also caught this this week. From a standpoint of like Duke, like when we first reveal the characters, we were going into like this like kind of more tech mission, hence the Joe Pros, which I think the Foosh coined, coined and I absolutely love that terminology. The Joe though. Pros? Hate to tell you, Lenny, but I don't think I coined that. I use it a lot, but if I remember right, I read it somewhere. I was like, that's freaking brilliant. So I ran with it. Can't take credit. <laughs> but of course, I can't give credit either because I read a lot of stuff and I don't even remember where I originally found that. What did I have for breakfast this morning? But if you enjoyed this Whoosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Whoosh. I don't even remember why I started the Whoosh channel on March 12th, but eight years, going strong. It's crazy. This is episode 250 of the weekly, give or take. I think at some point when I decided to number them, it, I, I, I well, okay, you know me and motivation, but... I counted as much as possible, so it may be a little higher, a little lower, but 250, still another milestone. And then I also passed 150,000 subscribers this week, which is pff, something I never even considered happening. But that's all on y'all. All I got is gratitude for those of you who enjoy me getting up here and just bleh. We just rocking and rolling, doing our thing, talking about toys. I'll see you next week.